Yeah. Um, so, um, this is not just an abstract problem. It has real impact on people's lives. We've had many disasters in the past. If you don't know the stories of these drugs, it's good to look at them. Um, currently, these are some drugs that I'm concerned about. Overuse. Uh, for many of them, there is a time and place, but they are being overused because there's been too much promotion and too many people believing uh, that these drugs are good for more people than they are really good for. Um, so there's the problem of direct harm. There's also the problem of opportunity costs. If we spend a lot of money on a very expensive drug, then we do not have money for other things. Um, that's the uh, long-acting uh, beta antagonist. It's the asthma drugs. So the long-acting version of uh, salmeterol, for example. Um, uh, it seems that uh, they actually increase the risk of serious events. You can mask that by giving them with a steroid. Uh, but it probably would be better to just have people with asthma just taking the steroid and not the long-acting. Uh, and to use a uh, short-acting one uh, when they need it for symptoms. Another problem, increasingly in many countries, the general public are becoming concerned about the relationship between uh, health professionals like me and the industry and they're starting to question whether they can trust us. Uh, this has m many harms. Uh, people will come to see us uh, later, when they're sicker. Uh, they will not trust our advice and not follow it, and thus there's harm. They will be less happy to pay us, and so it creates downward pressure on our incomes. So the harm is not just for the patients, the harm is for us as well. Um, uh, not just our income, but also our prestige in society. Now, I think we can learn from history. Mm. In the 1840s, uh, uh, obstetricians mm. and medical students did autopsies on women who just died of childbirth fever. Um, they did that because they were... They, had decided to uh, dispense with the superstition, you know, believing in things you can't see. They were scientists now, and they wanted to observe illness and understand it better. So they did these autopsies. Um, but they did not know that they were picking up an infection of bacteria from doing the autopsy. So when they delivered another baby, they transmitted the bacteria to the woman and caused the epidemics of childbirth fever at that time. When it was suggested that doctors could be part of the problem, they felt insulted. They thought it was an attack on their character. They looked at their hands and they said, my hands are clean, they could not see anything. This idea of something that was invisible, they're saying, that's superstition. We are scientists. We do not believe you. Because it did not fit with the paradigm of the time. So these were intelligent doctors who cared and had good hearts for their patients, but they could not believe that they could be part of the problem. They felt no symptoms themselves. Okay. Um, and this is because they didn't understand the germ theory of disease. It was not invented until ten years later. These days, because we understand the germ theory of disease, nobody feels insulted. We know that if we do an autopsy, we should wear gloves. Okay? So we have this technology to protect us from getting an infection. If we get an infection, we have microscopes, so we can diagnose the infection. And having made the diagnosis, we have antibiotics for treatment. 
Okay? So that's the 1840s. Now, um, 2010. Doctors uh, go to meetings uh, sponsored by drug companies. They see drug company representatives. Uh, they become infected with bias. Okay? They don't know it because uh, bias is an asymptomatic infection. Okay? If it, well, there's two types of bias. There's intentional bias, when you do something bad knowing that it's bad. In medicine, I think that's very rare. What is common is we have a genuinely held belief that it's not right. Okay? Uh, and when that happens, people do not know that there is any problem. So it's like an asymptomatic infection. Okay? This leads to harmful patients, poor treatment. Okay? If you talk to doctors about it, they could be part of the problem, they feel insulted. It's, they are intelligent, they care about the patients, they're good people. It's understandable that they feel insulted. I have no criticism of them. It's because they don't know the dual process theories of social psychology. Okay? For all my audiences, I ask, has anyone here ever heard of the elaboration likelihood model of persuasion? Around the world, nobody, except once, when I spoke in Washington to an audience of the Food and Drug Administration, there happened to be a social psychologist who was visiting, and she knew, and so that I've had one hand up, thousands of people, many countries, uh, five continents, nobody knows. Okay? It's the same as, it, th these theories are for persuasion, like the germ theory of disease is for microbiology. So we're exposing ourselves to persuasion, and we don't know the basic science. It, it's still being developed. You notice that with the germ theory, there's just one theory. With the dual process, there's multiple theories, because the psychologists are still working out exactly what is best. So I'll introduce you to some of them in a minute. Now, here's where it's different. The psychologists have not yet developed a technology to enable you to be exposed to persuasion without the risk of bias. Okay, so we don't have an equivalent of gloves. Um, we don't have a test for bias. We would need to have a, a gold standard of truth that you could compare. You know, uh, we'd have to ask God, what is the truth? Okay. If anybody can do that reliably, please let me know. It would be very helpful with technology. Okay. Um, uh, and we don't have a treatment. If people have a genuinely held false belief, it's very difficult to treat that. The psychologists have tried various things. Nothing works very well. So it's a big problem. Now, back in the 1840s, before these technologies of gloves and microscopes and antibiotics, uh, an American uh, said uh, that if you do autopsies, you should not deliver babies. If you deliver babies, you should not do autopsies. Okay? So, it is fine for doctors to see drug company representatives, but they should not treat patients. It's fine for doctors to get information from industry, but as long as they don't treat patients. Until we have some technologies to make it safe for the patient. Now, 